Hey again everyone, this is Stellar Firefly and I'm here to bring you another brief-ish tutorial about how to add, remove, and edit trader items on your Epic or Overpox server. This is another GTX server specific tutorial which means that we'll be making some specific assumptions as we go on. You can modify these steps to work with servers used by other commercial hosts or of course with your own private setups, but we won't be going through all the details here of how to do it in a generic way. It just makes the video more specific and thus much shorter. Let's get started. For the examples in this video, we'll be using the Overpark Chernaris installation. And here's the first GTX specific thing we need to know. Overpark Chernaris uses instance 11 on GTX servers. For those of you who don't know, each combination of mod and map is run in a different instance, and each instance has a number associated with it. So for example, Overpark Chernaris is instance 11, Overpark Namalsk is instance 15, and so on. I won't bore you by reciting every single instance in this video, but here's how you can find out for the most part. Go to your TC Admin Control Panel and click on the File Manager icon. Then open up the MP Missions folder. Beneath that, you'll see a bunch of other folders, most of which begin with Daisy underscore Epic, and then a number and a map name. You can probably figure out which one's being used by your particular server. The only time it may be ambiguous is when two different instances are named with the same map, but as of the making of this video, the only time I've seen that happen is here. Both instance 11 and instance 17 are Chernaris. But I'm telling you straight up right now, if you're running over Pox Chernaris, then you're running instance 11. I haven't personally tested them all though, so if you come across anything that can be confusing for other admins, then feel free to post about it in the forum thread for this video. Let's totally help each other out in this. Now the first basic thing that we need to know about traders in Epic and Overpock is that there are a number of traders on the map that all have their own associated character class. This character class defines what they look like, of course. So the Chinaris Bash City Weapon Trader, who has an associated character class of Civ underscore Euroman01 underscore EP1, uses the Civ underscore Euroman01 underscore EP1 model in-game and looks like this. But this class name is also used to determine what menu items show up when a player pulls up his trader menu. So when a player walks up to a Civ underscore Euroman01 underscore EP1 NBC in the game, he can access a trader menu that has the menu items Assault Rifle, Light Machine Gun, Pistols, and so on. The important thing about the character classes is that they are the only absolutely certain way to associate a trader with his trade menu item lists. The files may also contain comments that try to describe the trader, but there's no guarantee that any comment will be specific enough that we'll always be certain we know which trader it refers to. We'll see an example of this later. But for now, here's how to find out exactly what is the character class for a trader. You'll need to be an Infostar admin to do this, but if you've got access to edit your server's trade lists and look around your server's files, then I'm going to assume that either you already are an Infostar admin, or that you can make yourself one. Head into the game and walk up to the trader that you want to know about and look straight at him. Then just hit the letter I on your keyboard. At the lower left, you can see some info on what you're looking at. Here we just verify that the Bash City Weapons Trader is in fact a Civ underscore Euroman 01 underscore EP1. And if we go to the Ammo Trader across from him, then we can do the same thing and see that he is a Civ underscore Euroman 02 underscore EP1. Write down the character classes for all the traders for whom you wish to edit their wares. Or just save it to a text file somewhere. Now let's take a look at the list of traders. Head over to your TC Admin Control Panel and click on the File Manager icon. Then go to MP Missions, then the instance that you are running. Once again, this video will be using Chernaris 11 as the example. Find the server underscore traders dot SQF file and click on the pencil icon next to it to open the text editor. Aha! This second line has a list called server traders and here are all of the character classes for all the traders on the map. In fact, here's our Civ underscore Euroman01 underscore EP1 right here. Beneath that, there's a bunch of other lists that all begin with menu underscore and then the character classes. If we scroll down a bit, then we can find menu underscore Civ underscore Euroman01 underscore EP1. You'll see above it the comment weapons neutral. 
This is what we mean when we said that the comments may not exactly explicitly say which trader is which. Is this the weapons trader at Trader City Bash? Or is it the guy at Trader City Starry? Or maybe it's the guy at Trader City Clan? The reason we know it's a Bash trader is because we know he uses Civ underscore Euroman01 underscore EP1 model because we just saw it in game. If we scroll down a bit, then we can find a Weapons Neutral 2. Which trader is this guy? Glenn? Starry? There's just no way to tell for certain without heading out and checking which one of them uses the TK underscore Civ underscore Takistani 04 underscore EP1 model. The text in the list below the menu assignment are the menu items that show up when you open the trader menu. Notice that there is a number associated with each trader menu item. This number is often referred to as the menu ID number. But the database actually calls it the TID, which stands for trader ID. Just remember that they both mean exactly the same thing. Write down the TID for the menu items whose items you want to modify later. For example, if we wanted to edit one of the assault rifles for the Bash City Weapons Trader, then the assault rifle TID is 602. Now let's check out the database table where all the items are stored. To find your database login info, head over to your TC Admin Control Panel and click on the Database Login Info icon. Then press OK when it asks if you'd like to execute the script. Wait a few seconds, and then you'll see your database login info. Note down the URL which should end with phpMyAdmin, the database server, the username if epic, and the password. Then close the window. We'll be using phpMyAdmin in this video, but if you prefer to use your own database application, then feel free to do so. Your database should be accessible externally through the default port 3306. If you have no idea what the heck that means, then don't worry, you don't need that if you use phpMyAdmin. Note, however, that this video won't be a how to use PHP MyAdmin tutorial. So if you don't know how to use it, then you'll either have to learn how from others or just figure it out yourself. But don't worry, it's pretty easy. Just be careful to not accidentally wipe out your game database while you're at it. Open up a new window or tab in your web browser and go to the URL that you copied down. Then log in with the other info you copied down. Once you're in, the database table you'll be editing is called traders underscore data. Go ahead and click on that to browse the table. And here you can probably see what needs to be done. In particular, you'll note that you'll need to know the class name of any items that you want to manipulate, not just the in-game name. So for example, if you want to modify the price of DMR magazines, then you'll need to know that its class name is 20 round underscore 762x51 underscore DMR. The number after the class name defines the type, which is 1 for items or magazines, 2 for vehicles, and 3 for weapons or tools. If you're going to add new items, then make sure you set this value properly, and obviously keep the syntax the same. Make it a set of two items with the class name in double quotes. The buy and sell fields are where the item cost is defined. Buy is the cost when a player buys the item, and sell is the cost when a player sells the item. Five different item classes are used for common trade. Item silver bar are for single silver bars. Item silver bar 10 ounce are for 10 ounce silvers. Item gold bar are for single gold bars. Item gold bar 10 ounce are for 10 ounce gold. And item briefcase 100 ounce are for 100 ounce gold briefcases. The number to the left is the amount of each of these currencies. And so for example, this first item may be purchased for two gold bars. The number to the right is always 1, because all of these types of currency are items, and not vehicles, weapons, or tools. The A file field at the very end here must be set to one of six values. Trade items, trade weapons, trade any vehicle, trade backpacks, trade any bicycle, or trade any boat. I won't go into detail on what they mean and why, just remember that if you intend to add any new items for sale, Set this field to the value that best applies to your new item. The QTY field is the quantity of the item that the trader has available. Not much else to say here, except perhaps that this value is updated in real time. So if your trader has run out of items, then you may just edit this number to immediately restock him. Note, however, that the game essentially caches this data, so your players may not immediately see the change unless the game reacquires the info from the database. The order field is, well, 
It's unused on GTX servers, so just always set that to zero. Finally, the TID field. Here's where we determine or specify exactly which trader will deal with an item. Remember how our Bash City weapons trader had an assault rifles menu with an ID of 602? If we go to the search tab and search for a TID of 602, then we see that 346 different assault rifle records were found. These are all the assault rifles that our Bash City weapons trader trades. And so, with all of that in mind, it should be obvious what we must do to modify our traders' lists. To change the price for any item, just edit the buy and or sell fields here in the database. To remove an item, just delete its record. And finally, to add an item, we simply add a new record. Just make sure to use the correct TID so that you modify the correct trader and to use valid values and the proper syntax for everything else. Also, I strongly recommend that you make these changes when your server is shut down. That way, there's no cached old data still being used by the game that can overwrite your changes. Okay, because adding a new item is obviously more involved than editing or removing an item, let's go through some example steps, just to be clear. I've found that an M107 sniper rifle spawns on this map, but there is no trader entry for it. Let's add it to the Bash City Weapon Dealer's sniper rifles. We've already found out that the guy's character class is Civ underscore Euroman01 underscore EP1, but we didn't note down the TID for his sniper rifles. So we need to head over to the file manager and open up MP Missions, Chernaris11, server underscore traders dot SQF. Find the menu items for our Civ underscore Euroman01 underscore EP1, and we'll see that his sniper rifle TID is 605. We'll head over to our database and go to the traders underscore data table. Then we'll go to the insert tab to add a new record. Keep the ID field blank because the database will autofill that one. For the item field, we set to the proper class name, M107 underscore DZ, with a comma 3 because it's a weapon. The quantity field, well, most other weapon entries seem to be about 250, so we'll just go with that. Our buy price, well, most other weapons in its class seem to buy at 10 gold, so we'll use one item gold bar 10 ounce. Our sell price will go with half that, so five gold, five item gold bar. Order, keep it zero, just like we said before. And TID, remember, should be 605. Finally, the M107 is a weapon, so we'll set the A file to trade underscore weapons. And that's it. Just press go. The only thing left to do now is to fire up your server and head over to the trader in question to see if the changes were properly made. If not, then you should know enough now to go back and correct any mistakes. If you still have problems, then feel free to drop a post into the GTX forums in the thread for this video, and hopefully I or someone else can help you out. Okay, that really is it. There's not much more to be said about it without turning this into a tutorial about how to use MySQL databases or an in-depth discussion of epic trader mechanics or something, but we'll leave those topics for other videos. Thanks for watching, good luck, have fun, and watch your back.